Thank you, Jinsa. Thank you for uh, working, all of you, tirelessly for a secure Israel and a secure America. Thank you for understanding and promoting the importance of the alliance between a secure um, Israel and a secure America. We need that alliance more than ever in this vast expanse of land from the Atlantic Ocean through North Africa right up to the Khyber Pass. Israel stands out as a beacon of freedom, of tolerance, of democracy, of strength. I would add also of modernity, of technology, everything else that uh, Americans value as much as Israelis. Israel stands out also in its military strength, its willingness to use that strength for its own defense and for its vital interests. I think that the alliance between Israel and the United States remains critical in the years ahead in the unfolding events, and I salute you for working towards that end. I also wish to salute my good friend, Senator Kirk. Mark, you have uh, you've been a great champion of America and of Israel. You've been there in the breach time and time again. I think of you. I call you occasionally. I want you to know that I, I think you're a true American patriot and a wonderful friend of Israel and the Jewish people. Thank you, Mark. Thank you all. I'd like to call Congressman Ed Royce, Chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, to the stage, please. Well, let me, uh, let me share with all of you that it's indeed a pleasure to be here tonight to recognize Senator Mark Kirk. I've known Senator Kirk for close to 20 years now because he came to work, he was then in the Navy Reserve, came to work on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, as our counsel. But I think for those of us on the committee, what, it, what impressed us most was that whenever there was a crisis somewhere in the world, uh, we'd find that Mark was sent there on assignment. We were impressed by his judgment. We were impressed by his, um, his ability to see things as they really were in the world. But we were also impressed with the authority that he was being given. I'll tell you one personal story. I was in uh, Kosovo, and quite by coincidence, I saw a young officer in a flight suit who was organizing uh, and leading the air wing there, and I realized it was Mark Kirk. I don't know too many senators called up, as Mark was in 2011, to serve in Afghanistan. I don't know too many who have had his ability to go into North Korea and come back with the astute observation that we were being played by the North Koreans with respect to the 94 Framework Agreement. And I well remember, as do members on both sides of the aisle, hearing him out in his concerns about what was happening in North Korea and the lessons that others might be learning from our failure to stop North Korea from developing that nuclear weapon and our inability to put the kinds of sanctions in place that would implode that regime. As you know, those sanctions were lifted. And here's the other observation I would make. I know of no other friend or associate of mine who at that time on that committee saw our gravest challenge being the Ayatollah attempting to get his hands on a nuclear weapon. But that was Mark's concern. And what he was sharing with us was that we should be on offense, out showing solidarity with the people on the streets in Iran. We should be leading in reaching out with messaging to try to put in motion something that would change that oppressive theocracy. Now, over the years, I don't think any of us were that surprised when he was elected to the House of Representatives or then to the Senate. We knew the skills he possessed, but to watch him deploy those skills to convince Democrats and Republicans in the Senate to follow his vision of ramping up the pressure. When you talk about someone who knows about what sanctions do 
to a country like Iran in terms of their wherewithal to get a nuclear weapon, you know, Mark Kirk is the one that put those sanctions there. He convinced Bob Menendez and others in the Senate to follow him on a policy, and I can tell you it was him, because I got the personal phone calls over on the House side as Elliot Engel and I were offering legislation, walking me through why we needed to sanction those, ranch, ratchet those sanctions up, as he said, on, on petroleum, on their inability to repatriate earnings, because what will happen is that we will give the Ayatollah a choice between implosion of his, comp of, of his economy or compromise on his nuclear weapons program. But Mark's foremost concern was that those centrifuges had to stop spinning. And the reason he is so engaged right now on that issue is because the centrifuges are still spinning. And Mark Kirk, I think, because he has followed this since 95, knows better than most of us in the room what the full consequences will be should we not succeed in this. And this is why I believe his leadership to date has been imperative. But I think going forward, the challenges that we face demand his continued leadership, his devotion to duty, which he has shown throughout his career, both in politics and in his commitment to the defense of this country, and yes, to the defense of our allies like Israel. And tonight, I would just add my voice among those here, his friends here, who want to recognize what an extraordinary young man, as some of my Democratic colleagues had told me years ago, what an extraordinary young man we had as counsel on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. He is extraordinary today, extraordinary for what he's overcome, extraordinary for what he's achieved in the Senate. And we'll go forward, all of us, as you lead, Mark, Senator, as you lead in order to face those challenges ahead. Thank you for your commitment to this country. We all appreciate it. Congressman Royce, thank you. I would like to call Mr. Roger A. Crone, President of Network and Space Systems for the Boeing Company, to come to the stage. Thank you, Catherine. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. We are truly surrounded by extraordinary accomplishment and greatness here tonight. I am both humbled and honored to introduce a man of tenacity, vision, and courage, tonight's honoree, Senator Mark Kirk. In keeping with the ideals of Senator Henry Scoop Jackson, Senator Kirk has been fearless yet fair in his approach to American leadership in foreign policy issues. Senator Kirk understands the threats we and our allies like Israel <coughs> face every day. He has been a staunch champion of the vitally important U.S.-Israeli security relationship and has actively promoted U.S.-Israeli government and industry cooperation on missile defense. Also, I might add, with Senator Kirk representing the state of Illinois, home of Boeing's world headquarters, we have enjoyed a positive working relationship and appreciate what he has done to help Boeing to continue the capabilities of the United States military and its allies to defend freedom around the world. Specifically, we have enjoyed working with Senator Kirk on defense industrial base issues. I'd like to share a small excerpt from a congratulatory letter Peter Jackson, the son of the award's namesake, wrote. Peter writes, 
As a United States Senator, your example of principled independence and taking political risks in pursuit of the greater good are character strengths that my dad would have admired. His vision was grounded in the permanence of ideas and the realities of human nature. He understood, as his friend Pat Moynihan observed, that the world can be a dangerous place. He worked in common cause and across the aisle, believing that in matters of both national security and environmental stewardship, the best politics is no politics. Well said. Senator Kirk, please join me here on stage that we might offer our most heartfelt congratulations. I want to uh, thank you all for this incredible award and uh, recognize Admiral McRaven and all the men and women in this room who wear the uniform. Uh, also, Chairman Royce uh, for his uh, strong leadership in the House of Representatives on foreign policy issues. Uh, let me ask a question and I'll give you an answer. What is a Christian senator from uh, the Midwest, uh, why is he so committed to uh, Israel's security? The answer is because Israel shares our values free speech, religious freedom. Uh, if we abandon Israel, we uh, abandon our own values. If Israel is weak, then America is weak. Uh, let me uh, close with uh, some uh, key lessons of history that I always follow in my work in the Senate. One of them is that uh, dictators often say what they are going to do before they do it. We should believe them, not appease them. <laughs> I'll uh, keep going. Uh, when I announced for the U.S. Senate, I told you all that Israel would have uh, no greater friend uh, than, uh, than Mark Kirk of Illinois in, in uh, the Senate. I will continue working to uh, ensure that security every day. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and uh, what a great award. What a great night. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Kirk, for your service, and thank you for being here this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, to close the evening, please once again welcome JINSA's Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Michael Makovsky. I've been honored to be CEO of JINSA for a full seven months now. And uh, so this is my first dinner as CEO. It's, for me, at least, it's been a wonderful evening. Uh, I want to thank you all simply for coming here. I want to particularly thank, of course, uh, Admiral McRaven and the uh, recipients of the Grateful Nation Award, all the active and retired members of our military. Um, we're very grateful for your service and uh, for keeping us secure here in the United States. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Uh, I also want to thank Senator Kirk uh, for his leadership in the Senate. And as Chairman Royce, I think, uh, very eloquently put it, uh, Senator, I want to particularly echo what the Chairman said about Senator Kirk and that his tremendous leadership in the Senate, not just tremendous, but tireless, relentless leadership in the Senate for trying to prevent, uh, to address really the most immediate secure, national security, most, and most pressing national security threat that we face here in the United States, which is a nuclear Iran. We can't be more grateful. So thank you very much, Senator. And um, I also want to thank David Steinman. Uh, I'll just add, uh, he is, I think you probably all could see it in his uh, brief remarks, but David is a true gentleman. He's uh, the heartbeat of JINSA, and uh, I seek his guidance all the time, so thank you very much. We could honor David every year, frankly, and we're, uh, we're very grateful to have him involved. I also want to thank my, the hardworking staff at JINSA. These dinners don't just come up uh, automatically. They take a lot of hard work, as I'm sure you all know. And uh, I'll just conclude by saying, for those who don't know, JINSA was founded in 1976 and has ever since been dedicated to a strong U.S. defense, as well as a, a strong Israel. And I think we could all agree that we have our work cut out for us. We have a lot of work to do. We have a very aggressive agenda, and we look forward to uh, working with you all to pursue, I think, a common mission, and we look forward to all your support. Thank you very much, and have a good night. Thank you for being here.